Hey guys, it's Jesse and Amber. And Amber, we are at Root Down. I'm gonna do um, a couple little classes. I'm gonna start, and Amber has some things in store for us as well. Just always great to be back in the studio and and hanging out with each other. So we're excited, and hopefully you'll enjoy the next 60-ish minutes. Let's start in a comfortable seat or child's pose, whatever you prefer. And we're going to back that up. Amber's going to belly. Simply start to notice your breath. That one simple decision to focus on each breath can so help still our busy minds. We have lots of sounds in the studio today. The windows are open as it's a nice warm summer day out. We can hear some birds, some people, some Harleys, some, some motorcycles. <laughs> so let's hone in on your breath but also on the noises that are happening around you right now in your home or outside. Start to notice how a few deep, concentrated breaths really do affect your whole body. Not only do they help kind of still our, our minds, it really does help to kind of relax our bodies. It can even have that tad like of a euphoric feeling. Slowly press yourself up to all fours. <clears throat> Start moving around in your body to make that feel okay. Sometimes the more traditional cat cow is looking up and down feels good right away and other times might take a little side to side or big circles. We'll come back to a flat-ish back. Reach your right arm out in front of you, kind of adjust your bottom limbs to feel stable there. And just stay with your hand outstretched and work on pulling your belly muscles in. Just notice how you really do use your belly to lift your limbs. And once you have all that engaged, then go ahead and kick your left leg back. Sometimes I like to bend and um, or flex and point my ankle, my toes just a few times and then kind of lock into that pointing down position. Take a deep breath in. Breathe out. Take one more long breath, make yourself long. Bring your limbs back down. Maybe a little sway side to side to allow that to process. And start with just your left hand, reach Reach out in front of you. Engage your tummy muscles. And kick your right leg back. Just notice the extra weight of two limbs up, how you have to engage your belly even more to stay as strong and stable there. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. 
One more breath. Bring your limbs down. Now look up with a breath in. Curl your toes under and move to downward facing dog. Whatever movements here help you to make your down dog feel healthy. Maybe it's a little bend in your knees or just taking a shorter stance. Sometimes when I spread my hands wider on my mat, that can make me feel more stable. Take a deep breath in. Pour out your breath. Just walk to your hands and hang in rag doll position. Few breaths here. Interlace your hands at your lower back. You can either keep your hands on your lower back or if it feels good in your shoulders, you can pull your hands towards the front of wherever you're at. Maybe a little sway here side to side just to get into your side bodies. Relax your hands back down to the mat. Come into a halfway lift. Take a breath. Forward fold. Breathe out all that air. Come into halfway lift again. Breathe in. Fold. This time reach all the way up towards the ceiling or maybe you're outside. Kind of play around with your feet to make sure you feel nice and stable here. And just stretch all around, sides, back. Take a deep breath in, forward fold. Halfway lift, step back to a high push-up, even out the weight between your hands and your toes. Take a deep breath in, exhale out, push forward, lower halfway or less, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Take a full breath in, pour out and pull your hips up and back, walk or hop to your hands, halfway lift, fold, get empty, rise up, stretch, forward fold, halfway lift, High to low plank. Up dog, breathe. Downward facing dog. Take a breath in. Get a little springy with your legs. Walk or hop to your hands. Halfway lifts. Fold and half squeeze. Rise up, big breath. Chair pose. Couple breaths here. Find that happy medium, that perfect balance point. Light on your toes, heavy in your heels, but also feeling strong and stable. Pick a point for your eyes. And breathe. Take a breath in, breath out, one more, fold, halfway lift, chaturanga, up dog, downward facing dog, 
Step your right foot forward and come up for a warrior one. Shift around in your feet. Get stable there and pull up from that stability. And stretching tall or <clears throat> reaching up doesn't always mean that we mean your arms. It could just mean the top of your head or making your neck a little longer. Take a breath in. Breath out. One more breath. Chaturanga. Try to follow your out breath as you lower. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Step your left foot forward. Rise up, warrior one. Get strong in your bottom half, tall in your top half. Steady breath. Take a breath in. Breath out. One more expanse. Chaturanga. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Take a breath in. Send it out. Walk or hop to your hands. Halfway lift. Fold. Rise up, sink back to chair pose. Get steady here and then work your way into a power chair. You can take your time. So many different expressions of power chair. Take a breath in, breath out, one more breath, dive to your mat, halfway lift, chaturanga, up dog, downward facing dog. Send your right leg high. Draw your knee to your nose. Kick back. Knee to your right arm. Kick back. Knee to your left arm. Kick through for fallen triangle. Get your feet nice and wide. Press down to lift and maybe even arc back. <laughs> Take one big breath. Downward facing dog. Amber's like, it's easier to only stay if you have to do everything. <laughs> That's what Steph and I were saying. We can't fast forward through any parts. <laughs> it's probably been a little bit since you've had a fallen triangle. <laughs> it doesn't come up when I practice alone. Yeah. <laughs> Just never, this isn't one you think of doing. I know, I know. <laughs> Let's kick the same leg up, right leg up. This time just step through and come up for crescent lunge. There is a difference of our at home practices and when you have an instructor looking at you, <laughs> even if you're friends. <laughs> I'll do whatever you say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe it's the camera. It's not so much the, the structure, it's the camera. <laughs> Take a breath in. 
Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Another breath. Move to twist right. I do love the sound of echoing laughter in our studio space. It's a unique sound that I've missed. Take a long breath in, long breath out, unwrap to warrior two. Get your bottom half set and then set your eyes on that one spot. Take a breath in, steady breath out. Reverse your warrior. Stay here for a breath. Now take a long stretch. Half moon pose. Amber's got her block here, but I know not all of us have blocks at home. It's so whatever works. You can keep it a floating, kind of a floating star, or just reach for whatever you have next to you. Try to find as much length as you can from your back heel, top of your head, but then also palm to palm, like a wrist to wrist, two long lines. Take a deep breath in, out, one more sturdy breath, Fold your body, hang out here for a couple extra breaths. I know I always need a little bit to kind of sway around. It's a lot to put on your hip. Halfway lift, breathe in. Low push up. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Send your left leg high, knee to nose, kick up, knee to left arm, you're doing great, kick up, <laughs> here it comes, cross and kick through, right hand up for fallen triangle. There we go. You're doing awesome. You guys at home are doing awesome. You got this. Take a deep breath in. Open a bit further. One more long breath. Downward facing dog. You rocked it. Kick your left leg back up. This time step through for crescent and come up when you know you got your balance. Or figure it out once you get there. <laughs> it's always that first few breaths in crescent lunge. You just need to kind of get your bearings, to squeeze back into your leg muscles, to find your spot for your eyes, to find a good neutral place for your, your pelvis. Once you have all that figured out, then start to twist left. If we twist too soon, it's like we're twisting out of instability and then we get super wobbly. Couple breaths here. The more you look back, the more your shoulders will follow, the bigger your twist will get. But that doesn't always mean that that's what you should do. Do you think we should care that my head is cut off in the video? Maybe I should move back. Oh yeah, Amber's head's cut off. Keep twisting. She's going back. I mean, we're you're the star of this video, so <laughs> we want to see your beautiful face. That is better. Take another breath in. Come around for warrior two. Couple breaths. I must have looked at it when you were down low and it looks good. <laughs> Take a long breath in, a long breath out. Reverse your warrior. 
Stay here, breathe out. Another big breath. Work into half moon. Set up with care. Wiggle around to make it feel okay. I know sometimes I have to kind of move my, my hips around to get them out of the way so I can open up maybe a little bit more. Think about stretching open through your chest. Pull your right hip up more, open up. Take another breath in. Fold your body. A little bit of just giving yourself some love here. Halfway lift. Chaturanga. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Take a breath in, pour out your air. Walk or hop to your hands, halfway lifts, fold. Rise up for chair pose. Find that balance once again between like the pads of your feet and your heels. Begin to twist right. And again, just know that twists don't always have to be this big swooping motion. They could be just kind of these little, little turn to the right. A little glance over your right shoulder. Just a little squeeze of your innards. <laughs> Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Let's do one more breath. Forward fold. Just hang here for a little bit. Yep, shake it out. No rules. Just make it feel good. Come back up to chair pose. Just find that balance in your feet. No gripping. Kind of more weight behind you than in front of you. Begin to twist left. Just notice this side. Does it feel like your breath is more spacious or less spacious? Let's go for more. <laughs> you feel like it's more restricted on this side. Maybe not twist as much. Take a deep breath in. Forward fold. Stay low, get into squatter's pose. Amber's been doing a lot of this. Squatting <laughs> and eating and munching. <laughs> I have helped in this endeavor. <laughs> now stay here or play around with whatever crow practice you're working on. Um, but I know <laughs> when I talked to another teacher the other day, crow was not going to happen. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> Crow, again, could be whatever you want it to look like. It could be putting something under your head or something under your toes. It could mean playing around with you know, putting one toe down and then pulling up the other one. Just come in and out as you need to and want to. 
find a lot of arm balances are finding that balance of like efforts but fun connecting to our younger childhood selves when we thought nothing of getting upside down and throwing our legs up above our heads for just for the fun of it. So take a resting pose when you're done with your crow practice, whether that's a squat for you or child's pose or maybe puppy dog. Just some gentle movements to kind of work that all out. When you're ready, downward facing dog. Slowly tiptoes, tiptoe to your hands. And come all the way up to a standing position. Just open up your chest, roll back your shoulders. Move into tree pose, right foot up. Hone in on that one spot for your eyes. Squeeze into your standing leg and make it nice and strong. I love feeling my ankle like work without me even having to, to think about it. It just automatically stabilizes and I can see Amber's ankle doing that for her right now. Like your body knows what to do. Take a deep breath in. Out. One last breath. Switch your sides. You might need a little movement in between just to kick it out of there. <laughs> Go up when you're ready. Just re-notice all those things. Strong leg. A strong ankle that knows what to do. Steady eyes and steady breaths. Take a deep breath in, send it out, one last breath, bring both feet to your mat, just a little movement side to side. Let's go into airplane pose, just kick your right leg straight back behind you, just come in super slow, super steady. Not trying to force anything to happen, but simply noticing all the little things your body just kind of does to help you balance here. Take a deep breath in. Out, one more lift, switch your sides. And sides can feel pretty similar, or sometimes, depending on what you have going on in your body, another a side can feel completely different. 
We might have to modify to make it feel good. Take a deep breath in, out, one long breath, bring your feet together. Stretch up towards the ceiling, take a breath, forward fold, halfway lift. Staff pose, sit, legs out in front of you. Kind of shift around, make that feel good. You're gonna start with just pointing and flexing your feet. And just notice if you need a little knee bend here, or if you need, I was just gonna say, your hands kind of at your sides or behind you like Amber just did to hold you here. And then bring your toes to go up towards the ceiling, so flex them, and then just go right to left with your feet. And if it feels like you need to stay on one side for a little bit, do that. Or if the back and forth tic-tac feels good, stay with that. And then come back to center, just find a kind of a neutral place for your feet. Reach your arms up overhead, stretch tall, take a long breath in, forward fold over your legs, this is just free game here, it can look like lots of things. You could just rest your arms and your legs, you could kind of pull on your feet or the backs of your legs. You could be completely still and kind of just slumped. Or you could add movement here. I often like a little side to side. It just gets into those like cords that run alongside your spine and your lower back. Or if I do pull my feet in the backs of my legs, it can just stretch out all that tissue and muscles over your shoulder blades and the back of your neck. So much is available to you. Just explore what feels best for you. And slowly roll up. Take your right foot over to like this, so foot flat, yep. Kind of adjust yourself so you're nice and tall and then just wiggle your fingers to kind of help press into the floor to look over your right shoulder. However you need to adjust to make that comfortable and work as a twist for you without forcing anything to happen. Take one more breath in, unwind and go to the other side. Left leg over, half Lord of the Fishes. Twist left. Just trying to find that equal part length and twist. If it's too much twist without length, you kind of get a hunch and a crank. If it's all length and no twist, then you're losing the benefits of, of kind of squeezing. Take a breath in, out, one more breath, come back around, kick your feet out, maybe shake them around a little bit, and just lay down for a bridge pose if you have a block or pillow and you want to take assisted bridge, that's always a nice place to hang out for a while.
but exploring never has to end. That's why we can do these poses a thousand times and we can find just new little discoveries. You can find discoveries in the stillness. You can find it in the movements. Our bodies change, our activities change, our lifestyles change, and so we could do the same movements over and over again, and yet there's always something new to find. If you've taken a regular unsupported bridge, and you need to come down to rest, please just add those in when you need them. When we can't see students to speak those to those, um, you know, taking breaks moments, you need to know that you can take breaks anytime you need them. Come in and out of whatever bridge practice you're feeling today. And then we'll give time to either continue in bridge or if you'd like to take a wheel, this would be the time to do it. Just because you're on camera, Amber, does not mean you need to do a bridge. You could choose, I mean, wheel, you could choose bridge. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose bridge. <laughs> that, is, that is okay. So last one, go up with a breath, bridge or wheel. I celebrate you doing either or. And so does Amber. <laughs> yeah. We're just happy you're doing yoga. <laughs> Take one big glorious breath breath here at the top of wherever you're at and then slowly come down as you exhale out all your breath find Supta Baddha Konasana so allow your knees to open your belly to soften We're going to move into figure four just on your back here. Take your right leg over first. So many options here too. You could stay just like Amber is with, you know, left foot still on your mat. You could add by kind of kicking your leg up. And you can also reach through to the back of your left thigh. If you have a block or pillow available, I really like putting one under my head here. It kind of helps bring my ends together. But if that doesn't feel good, of course, check it. And we'll just stay here a few breaths to allow, hopefully, your right hip to open just a little bit. Find what works on this side. I don't know 
if you the guys at home can hear the birds picking up on the microphone here, but with the windows open here and the trees outside, it's all little Twitter birds. Just a few more breaths, a few more little opportunities to open up your left side. Hug your knees in towards your chest, maybe a little rock here or just a squeeze. Send your legs up for waterfall. You can always add your arms up for bear if you'd like. Yeah, a little block or pillow under your hips just helps take a little bit of the, the work out of holding your legs up. Oh, you wanted to go to the wall, but now you're already in. She's happy. <laughs> if you're close to a wall at home or a piece of furniture, feel free to put your legs up on it. It is delightful to have that extra support behind your legs. If we weren't practicing social distancing, I would give you that support right now, Amber, and massage your feet. <laughs> it sounds nice. Another time. <laughs> you can just imagine me pulling on your ankles gently, pressing my thumbs into your heels, and then working up to the pads of your feet. <laughs> Gentle sway back and forth on your legs. If you're at home and you want to take a plow, go for it. Otherwise, everybody just stay. And slowly start to come down. Just drop your knees to the right. A look a left. Just allow the weight of your own legs to pull you to that side. I don't know if you've heard a couple buses go by, but I know for a fact that at my 8 p.m. Monday night class, that I'd open the windows right around Shavasana, that then I could hear the bus go by. And I knew I was on time when <laughs> I'd open the windows and that bus would go by. Yes. <laughs> Switch sides, lead to the other side. We are such creatures of habit and to have experienced something like we've experienced the last few months with all of our schedules and activities just looking so differently it's been interesting to just follow along in that process of how we deal and adapt come back to center and without trying to make it look like what you think Shavasana should look like. Just allow your body to go limp and get comfortable. Sometimes my legs are bent, sometimes my arms are bent. Just take a final breath in and as you release out, just has, be, have that as a signal to your whole body to 
but this is this is it total relaxation shavasana Slowly start to wiggle around and come out, maybe deep in your breath. If you like rolling to one side, do that now. Otherwise, just make your way up to a comfortable seat. <laughs> Sit up nice and tall. And draw your hands into your heart. A couple deep breaths here. And I just don't feel like I can teach a yoga class without at least one ohm. So let's do one all together. Take a deep breath in. Ah. Just totally thinking of all of you and how you know, the true meaning of namaste, that we are truly in this together, that we are the same, that we are still connected. Namaste. Thanks you guys for continuing to tune in to our little virtual classes here. We're doing what we can to stay connected, continue to look for our posts, check out YouTube. Come Mess see us in the park. Yes, come see us at the park. Go to the sub classes. Those are super fun. Connect with us on Facebook. Tell us what you're doing. We love you. We miss you. And we just really, truly hope to see your faces soon. Bye.